10 years ago, 15 years ago, a show like this would have been unthinkable. Galleries weren't having shows of comics, museums weren't, but incrementally things have changed. I'd like to think I've been doing my part almost my whole career, and here we are. This is a real, in a sense, triumph to even just be here in such a setting. Newberg's Ann Street Gallery recently hosted Schumer, whose efforts to expand the definition of fine art are featured in the Comic Art Fantasy and Imagination exhibition through May 7th. But when you look at what Tarzan represents, and what the comic strip represents, sequential images to tell a story, how far back in art history do we need to go to see the precedence of sequential images telling a story? Hey, how about as far back as the cave paintings at Lasco, the very first images that we have that human beings made? I think these men, 500 years from now, our historians are going to look back and say we lived amongst giants and that these are our Michelangelo's and Da Vinci's and our Raphael's. Schumer, who designed the composite for a 2020 segment on ABC, explained how he first became enamored of the comic art form. I've been drawing since I was three years old and then in summer camp and when I was five or six, I was turned on to comic books that were in the bunks. Uh, along with the Archies and Bettys and Veronicas, they were superheroes. And started drawing from looking at the comics and reading the comics. And they really taught me really everything I know about art, even though I went to a great art school and studied with great artists. Schumer's lecture detailed decades of comic art as it suffuses American culture, plays on our patriotism, and has become inseparable from our national ideal of heroism. Its undeniable presence on TVs and in theaters validates comic art as a charismatic and pervasive force in our society. I had had these ideas about relating fine art to comic art, maybe even my whole life, because all of us comic artists, everybody that loves comics, we grew up wanting the regular world, the straight media, the academic world, the gallery, the art world, to accept comics. They have and they are. Andy Warhol, R. Crumb, and Roy Lichtenstein have become iconic, due largely to their indelible interpretations of commercial and cartoon art. And it's uh, based on two images. The background image is a beautiful Rubens painting, who I love, who actually is kind of like a superhero painter in himself. It's uh, Samson Delilah from 1610, and it's a big meaty oil painting. Um, and the front image is Lou Ferrigno from a promotion photo of Lou Ferrigno as the Hulk from the 70s TV show. Comic art and fine art intertwine constantly, that uh, they intersect a lot more often than people think, that more and more comics influence fine art as well as fine art influencing comics. Faith Fallon was America's sweetheart during the 1950s. She was America's favorite actress, everybody loved her, men wanted her badly, women wanted to be her. The animation programs, motion comics, you know, everything now is moving in motion. If you don't have an open mind, then there's no art. If you have a closed mind, then you're not an artist. I'm not here to say comics are better than fine art, and I'm certainly not here to say fine art is better than comic art. I'm just here to create the conversation and to just say, you tell me what you think about this compare and contrast. Jay Berkey, HVNN.com.